Let's Podcast. Alongside Joe Giglio, I'm Joe Ovias inside Eford Studios. Thanks to Empire Properties and thanks to Copiers Plus. Check them out online, copiers-plus.com. I did my taxes. I didn't have to print off a bazillion sheets of paper to make sure I had all, you know, the, the cork board and the string to, to piece it all together. But it was stressful, Joe. It was stressful. But document management was a breeze thanks to Copiers Plus. So check them out online at copiers-plus.com. Welcome back from the desert. Thank you. I'm ready to move. Dude, it's nice out there, isn't it? Especially like every single person who was from there was like, like yeah, like, yeah, this is the best weather we've ever had. Like, period. Of course. You know? Of course. Like, of course. I'm like, what do you mean it's 120 degrees here? This is great. This is gorgeous. The golf looks wonderful. Oh, don't tease me. I was so close to uh, TPC Scottsdale. Like, I was. Yeah. If I had golf clubs, uh, it probably it probably would have happened. I mean, you could have you could have rented clubs. Yeah, but by the time because I, I was with Jackson, you know, by the time we did that, you're know, talking about probably a grand. Okay, to play yeah. and rent clubs. Yeah, Scott Scottsdale's nice, man. Um, and the food is also fantastic out there as well. But yes, you would not have been proud of the of the food choices that were made. Uh, did not really delve into the Mexican Cali Mexican any kind of. What did you eat? <sighs> Bad choices were made. Why are you so basic, dude? I know. I, <laughs> I, that was the one thing I said to myself. And, but no, but listen, so listen, but listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I'm going to just defend myself here for one fine. second. Fine, 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 fine. First of all, I did go to In N Out. So I, okay. no one had ever been. Everybody wanted to go. Oh, so the whole family had never been? You had never been? No, I, or Jessica had been, but it's been a, she had, she went to California a long time ago. Okay. Okay. 20, 25, 26 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, in and out Burger, we did hit, we enjoyed that. The French fries at in and out Burger are, I think, are actually better than McDonald's. I, I never They're, thought I would say that in my life. Well, what's funny about in and out is this is where regionalism has been flattened and you come to realize that. Now, the reason why people rave about this stuff is because it was their stuff, right? But yes. I will say this. Like, In-N-Out was always positioned as this incredible burger experience. No, it's just like an elevated version of McDonald's for a region. But you're right about the fries. They're amazing. The fries are legit. <laughs> Big fan of the fries at In-N-Out. So then it was James's birthday, the 6th. Yeah. So my, my oldest, his birthday. He flew through Chicago. So it was his first time flying by himself. Oh, wow. He wasn't with us on okay. Thursday, okay? Yeah. So he ended up flying through Chicago because he flew directly into, he threw to Phoenix, okay? Mm. He thought he was, when he saw like this layover and this and that, he thought he was going to be like in the Midway airport for like a day. You know, he was like, oh, I'm going to get a Chicago hot dog. I'm going to get Chicago pizza. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. <laughs> he ended up getting like a Lunchable from, you know, like the Hudson News. Right. And he was, you know... <laughs> He's not a big eater. You've seen James. You know James. No, James is a stick. So it just so happened there was a Lou Malnati's in Scottsdale, up a stone's throw from the hotel. Okay. So he was like, I wanted Chicago pizza. And I said, All right, well, Lou Malnati's in it's Phoenix. A chain, but it's Phoenix. <laughs> I get that, but it is Chicago <laughs> pizza. I know, dude. <sighs> And then we did hit Del Taco. I saw our our forever producer Jonathan Rand. Oh, okay. On Sunday, uh, shouts to Chad and Abby uh, who just got married a week ago. Their crew went out and got an Airbnb in Phoenix on the outside of Phoenix, like a suburb with a pool and By this the whole way, thing. Hard stop. Yeah. Does Rand have some sort of slush fund <laughs> we're not aware of? He's working for the government now. Man. Even before that, when he was making peanuts at the corporate job. He would find himself at hockey games all the time. And I'm like, those weren't station seats. What is what is up with Rand? Does he have a secret stash of money we're not aware of? Rand, Rand Road, New Rand Road. I mean, come on, man. It's Garner Royalty. Okay. So all right. Cause I know that government job ain't paying that. So I did my, get... my pack, my taxes did not pay for that, Joe. Anyway. They might have. Yeah, maybe they did. Um so I did have Del Taco. A free Shavakadu. Yeah. The Del Taco. And and that was a it's Taco Bell. That was Taco Bell. It's yeah, not, it's Taco Bell. So the interim meals were really kind of. You just, oh, the hotel had free breakfast. Cool. So my my clock was all off. We yeah. we basically ate twice a day. <laughs> and 
you got to remember, like I could gamble at 10 o'clock in the morning. So yeah. like there was, yeah. Yeah. There was, there was a lot going on. I'm really disappointed in you. I, I even said to Jessica, I go, we needed to get like one California, Baja, Mexican, <sighs> dude, something. Dude. And it just didn't work out that way. Because actually okay. the boys ended up going again on Sunday to in and out Burger. Because James hadn't been by that point. I guess you had some ho-hum meals like UConn won another ho-hum championship. Yeah. Just, the, the, the meals were not the highlight of the trip. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the meals were not supposed to be the highlight of the trip. The highlight of the trip was uh, getting to see that spectacle and, and taking it in. Like I, I had texted my brother because he had never been to a final four before. He wanted to go obviously because of NC state and he was bummed out. He was in his feelings. He's like, but it was still a cool experience. And I think you referenced that your audio sucked. It is what it is, but you hit on something that I don't think people appreciate about the final four. Even if you don't have a team in the final four, if you go to the right city, it really is like a college basketball fan convention. Yes. It's a great time. Yeah. You just see, you see people rock their gear, even if they're there, even if, even if their team's not there, you can go to the fan fest. Yes. It's a big corporate event, but you're seeing everybody rock their stuff. I, it's, it's a cool event. I stopped so many. I mean, when I say so many, at least three. Yeah. Carolina fans. And I just said to them, uh, that's, Respect. Yeah, props. You rep your team. Where's you at respect? You, you're just rocking the shirt. But there was one guy there who was like on on the practice day, and I should have sent you the video. Yeah. He X XYZ, I think was his name. He was like, Welcome to our house, little brother. Like he had the whole thing going. Like he was awesome. That's funny. He was awesome. Because Carolina won the championship there. Yeah. In back seven in, in back 17. In, yeah, back in 17. So like I respect all the people who know all this history and all this other stuff. And I know some state fans were not happy with their Purdue people. But I was like, listen, it, you Purdue's should respect just another Purdue. version of state. They are the Big Ten version of NC State. Yes. But to which uh, Steve was like, yeah, oh, yeah. If only Indiana and Notre Dame were both winning, you know, national championships and going to the Final Four every other year uh, at the same time. And it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I get that. Point. I see it now. <laughs> I get that point. But it doesn't matter because UConn's winning all the national championships. Uh, I'll, they, and I'll ask again. Yeah. Who yeah. would you rather be? Yeah. They they let Zach Eady. Eat last night, uh, mon monster game from Zach Eady, but that wasn't the point, and that's kind of been understood with Purdue. If he wants to get his, let if he's going to win the game, man, let him win the game. What are you going to do about it? Let everybody else try to help him out, and 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 UConn did a really really good job. It wasn't all that dissimilar from the game plan that NC State had defensively to push things out and force Purdue to try to win that game from beyond the arc, which of course in the second half when NC State's NC State couldn't make a shot, and Purdue was making some big shots. You know, I ended up being a difference in the game. They only scored 50 points. Now that the great uh, shit of uh, the, the last, you know, two scores is over. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can say the name J.J. Redick. I, I said before the Purdue game, you just have to enact the J.J. Redick rule. Sure. When J.J. was at Duke, yeah. if J.J. scored 40, you're probably going to win. Yeah. Because it was Daniel Ewing. It was the other guys. Yep. It wasn't JJ that was well, going to beat you. And that's the thing about UConn. You said this earlier uh, when UConn and North Carolina played. It's like you could just tell even back then they're just playing at a different level mm -hmm. under Dan Hurley. They've recruited players. They've got players that just kind of come at you with waves. These are college players uh, that they've got depth. There's not any one player that's going to beat you. There's just multiple guys that are going to do their jobs and they're going to do it well. And the stats of what UConn was able to do. And this kind of leads into the whole, who would you rather be? You know, like this whole ridiculous, are you a blue blood? Which I do have some thoughts about that. But no, we have this right. When you go back to last year, when you go back to last year, that's 12 tournament wins in a row. And they've won by at least 13 points. Okay. In all of these games. And um, this is from Eamon Brennan on his newsletter. It's it cemented the largest combined margin of victory, 140 points by any NCAA tournament champion from a team winning its second straight, which of course hasn't happened since Florida did it back in 07. And for the entirety of the 2024 tournament, all 240 minutes of it, UConn trailed for, for, for precisely six minutes and 22 seconds. That's dominance. Think about it this way. We all agree the 09 Carolina team is, is the best championship team around here in the last 25 years. Easily. On right? another level. Yes. Right. And they won all of their games by double digits. Hammered everybody. 
Imagine if they came back the next year and did it again <laughs> right. with, you know, with a slightly different crew now, sure, let, let, let's sure, give Hurley sure. some credit here. Cause this was, yes, uh, Klingon was there and there were, there was some other, and, and Tristan Newton shouts to the ECU transfer mm -hmm. respect to ECU basketball there. Tristan Newton, one of those cogs. Uh, but the truth of the matter is they, they started a guy who began his career at Loyola, Maryland and a guy who, who began his career at ECU. Mm -hmm. So that might seg into your blue blood. I don't see the blue blood starting those types of transfers, but you part of that is when you get in there, you assimilate and being able to yeah. make those pieces fit into what you want to do. So they've won UConn as a program over three different coaches has won six national championships. That's more than Duke since 99. All right. Yeah, that's, that's more than Duke. You know, well, let's just go since 99, though. Yeah, it's more than anybody. <laughs> it, it is more than anybody. Yes, it is more than anybody. Um, but they are, when you look at uh, total championships won in a stratosphere that you see your typical usual suspects, you see Kentucky, you see Kansas, you see North Carolina, you even UCLA, if you want to go all the way back, even though UCLA hasn't won a national championship since what, 1995, I think it is. Is that, is that the last time they won a championship? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, so there's this, there's this argument and I get why the argument exists because it's really easy sports talk fodder. Do you want to light up the phone lines? Yes. You don't feel like working today? Cool. All you got to do is say, is you kind of blue blood and boom, it'll light up the phone lines. But here's, it's a trick question. Who freaking cares? Who cares if they're a blue blood? It's not a trick question. It's the wrong question. Okay. What is the, the question? question is, who would you rather be? But that's, that's open to interpretation. Sure it is. Now, no, I, but I ask you that and you already know my answer. And, and I made this argument last year. And we're obviously here with a lot of Duke fans and a lot of Carolina fans in this yes. area. Yeah, we're we're skewed by right? this. Yes. Now I'm I'm willing to listen to the argument in more ways than than I may have appeared close minded. Duke in particular. Would you rather have uh, the the three four month run build up with a singular talent like a Zion Williamson, mm -hmm. or would you rather be the national champion? You'd rather be the national. I don't know, though. No, I, I no, think but for, for most getting for at, you most get like fans. these big stars, which Duke, Duke, Duke and Kentucky of the Blue Bloods have had these stars. Yes. The biggest names in college basketball. And Duke's going to have it again this upcoming and season. And Duke's got another one of those coming up. Like if you're Danny Hurley, you're sitting here, you recruited Cooper Flag. The fuck do you got to do to get that guy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just ran rough shot over the world and you still can't get him. So that might be your answer to are you a Blue Blood? It might be, but again, I then respond to that with a question. So you don't get Cooper flag. You cool. clearly I'll don't go get somebody out of the portal you, and beat you with you clearly. You, with you clearly don't need Cooper flag. And there's a conversation that we can tie in with John Calipari in a second after we do housekeeping and everything else, because I do think these things are tied with the state of college basketball. Well, you do this long enough. You deal with conversations after a champion. Is this the template? Do they have the blueprint to win national championships? Remember when Kentucky won a national championship in, what was that, 2012? 12. It was, Calipari's going to run college basketball forever. He's got this pipeline of talent going to the NBA, Drake's shooting layup lines. Of course, you get this far away from it. The only thing that I can think of right now to stop UConn is if Drake puts on a UConn jersey and does layup lines with them <laughs> at their Midnight Madness because he is the cooler. But the point is, 10, 15 years ago, we we're convinced this is how you win college basketball games. So much to the point where Duke completely transformed their program and remade themselves with the brotherhood to get the one and done talent. Now it's up to John Shire to see, OK, where is college basketball going? Because you clearly cannot out talent to win a championship today because of the changing nature of college basketball through the portal, through NIL, guys sticking around talking about 22 year olds 23 year olds playing basketball that's different than where it was back in 2012 2015 Kentucky may have more college players mm -hmm. they may Kentucky may have more lottery picks than all of other college basketball teams combined and clearly this Kentucky year. fans got tired of that shit yeah they didn't want that anymore they wanted championships they didn't want it anymore look but if that John team Cal had if that team had won though, but that's the thing you, to to be the blue blood, you got to do both. Right, you got to do both. Have the stars and, and win and be relevant and, and that's, consistent. That's why it's a very very exclusive club because there's only so many programs that can do that. And Kentucky had one part down for the most part in the last 15 years with John Calipari 
but didn't have the other part. And that was consistent winning in the NCAA tournament, consistently getting to a final four. I'm not even talking about winning championships. Right. Kentucky wasn't even making it out of the first weekend. And obviously, Kentucky fans got upset with that. The worst thing that John Calipari ever could have said, I forgot what year it was, but it was the draft where they put right. like five dudes. This is, this is my national championship. Yes. This, this, is, this is the greatest moment in Kentucky basketball history. I think it was six first round. Six first round. <laughs> what? No, absolutely freaking not. Because those don't get put up in banners. You don't put a banner up at Rupp that says we put X amount of guys in the NBA that year. No, you put up a Final Four banner. You put up a championship banner. That's what you do. Actually, at Kentucky, they only do championship banners. That's true. That's yeah. true. So it gets back to your central question. Who would you rather be? And I think it depends. If you understand that, to be a blue blood, it is a very exclusive club, and that you're trained to want top level players. You understand that to be at Duke, Kentucky, Carolina, you're talked about 24 7 in your sport every single year. You run the news cycle with your recruiting, you run the news cycle with your MTEs. When you show up, you are the attraction. That is the true sign of a blue blood, and that has its own thing. When you wear that Carolina shirt, you wear that Duke shirt. There's like that head nod. It's like the people who drive Jeeps and they put the little rubber ducks on the dash. Like, hey, buddy, I see you. But UConn is how the 98% of us live. And if you ask any other program, who would you be? Who would you rather be? You can't ask that question to Carolina fans. You can't ask that question to Duke fans. You can't ask that I, question I, to Kentucky fans. But you can't ask that question to a state fan. Sure. Who would you rather be? Would you rather try to get toe-to-toe with Carolina and Duke? Go for the big recruits all that stuff, be the center of the college basketball universe all the time, or would you rather do what Dan Hurley just did and win another national championship? So the reason we're even having this conversation is because in 26 years, UConn has won the national title six times. Yeah. Okay? They've been to the Final Four seven times. Yeah, yeah. They've also missed the tournament nine times in that same span. Right. That's wild. But That's wild. It's, it's, my, it's my Marlins effect. Right. <laughs> well, are I, you, sh- you showing up? Oh, we win in this and, thing. Let's go. And it was our old friends at uh, uh, the Tar Hill blog mm-hmm. t- talking about the real problem that I think Carolina and Duke have with UConn is they've had no pain. So w- Carolina had Chris Jenkins, right? Carolina had the NCAA investigation, and, and, and UConn had one of those two. Kentucky's too, got Luke May. Kentucky's, Kentucky's got Christian got Leitner. Luke May. Kentucky's got Christian Leitner. Yeah. Kentucky has their own pain. What is Kentucky UConn has? Have? Kentucky has losing to Oakland. Kentucky has losing to St. Pete. What's UConn? Right. Have? What does UConn have? Honestly, because Kentucky. I mean, UConn is the embodiment of what I always say. If you're going to lose, lose big. Don't give me this. Don't don't dot me mm-hmm. in the title game and make me eat that for a year. Okay. You know what I mean. Uh, if you're going to lose, lose big. Right. They went four years in a row without making the tournament after under the last two of Kevin Ollie, first two of Danny Hurley. Yeah. Okay. So they went four years without making it. And this is where a Duke could curl. I'm oh, man, I'll be miserable if we didn't make it. And it's like, I was thinking about this on the, on the ride in downtown tonight. And I'm on no sleep, by the way. <laughs> Got in at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not on sleep any, but that's a yeah. matter altogether. <laughs> different, 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 different. I was thinking about this. Like how many conversations that you and I have had with Roy Williams? Yeah, a lot. Like, you, I feel you've like had more than me, but, but yeah. I feel like you're we giving me too much credit. I feel like we understand Roy. I'm just the big fella. I feel like we understand Roy, right? Yeah. Roy, if I'm if my math is right, nobody won more than Roy. If you take from like '96 at Kansas, speaking of blue bloods, he coached at Kansas mm-hmm. and Carolina. Mm-hmm. You go from '96 to that title in '17. Nobody won more basketball games. Nobody went to the Final Four more. But he, I'm going to use the words only now. Right. Only. <laughs> he only won it three times. Yeah. Right. Only. <laughs> and you think about that success, the win percentage, all of the conference titles that he had, yeah. nine trips to the final four. Yeah. Are you going to sit here with what we know about Roy and say to me right now that he wouldn't take UConn's resume over his? No. Joe, you know how he can drop those stats from that Syracuse game in 03. No. That's just one of the losses that he can drop the stats from. No. You know what I mean? No. I don't I don't and that agree. even discredits his first Final Four in 91. I, I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. And I You don't? I, no, I don't agree with that. You don't think Roy would take the six titles? No. no. Really? On multiple levels. On multiple levels. Because this is another thing about Oh, you're the, saying the four years would have eaten him alive. I honestly I think 
the there's, four, there's, the four there's, without there's, the tournament. Well, there's levels to this. Yeah. Yes, not making the tournament would four times. Been. Okay, because if he if he feels that way about losing on the biggest stage, what's what's he going to feel like not even participating? Not being there. Okay, okay. But there's there's another issue here with the blue blood, and I see this kind of with Kentucky a little bit too with John Calipari. Roy, I'm not saying that Dan Hurley doesn't love UConn. Okay, sure. Roy loves Carolina. Yeah, there, there's a certain kind of way there. There's a certain kind of way there. Yeah. He loves so, he loves so, Kansas too. So his and that's two, also that's so his three at Carolina are like LeBron's one with Cleveland. There, there, it, it, the, it meant more. It meant more to him for a variety of reasons. Same with Mike Shashevsky and Duke. Yeah. Now it's a different kind of love for Duke because it's essentially a program that he shaped in and of himself, right? I mean, what the, the Duke you see today is Mike Shashevsky's Duke. The Carolina, like you like to point out, Carolina with Roy was him saving what Carolina was and what he loved about Carolina and bringing all that stuff back, the family back and everything else. But there's an ownership to it, yeah. one way or the other. That's fair. And maybe Dan Hurley is able to do that at UConn because what do you associate with UConn? Like, I still am the old guy that still associates UConn with Jim Calhoun. That's his program. Is it? Is it? Is it going to be Dan Hurley's? I don't know. So that's another level about the blue blood factor to it in that I'm not saying people don't love UConn. I'm simply pointing out that there's a different level of ownership that happens with those programs from the fan bases to the coaches who have been there. X, y. And that's a, that's an issue with John Calipari, which we can get to in a second. But to answer your question, and there's no right answer, it's all on what you expect and what you're used to, but it's a dumb question. It's the a blue dumb, blood or the who'd you rather the, be? The blue blood question is a gatekeepy question. Yes. You know, it's like in 2024... And what you're seeing on the media landscape, like, oh, you know, do you want to write for the New York Times? Why would I want to write for the New York Times when I have the ability to do my own thing? Why? And I was actually listening to, I was actually listening to a podcast, um, the uh, Press Box podcast from The Ringer and uh, with Brian Curtis. And they were talking to a guy uh, who does afternoon radio in Chicago. And you know, he, he said, like, I grew up in this area. Like for me, doing afternoon drive in Chicago was a big deal. But that was a thought process from like 15 years ago, right? Now, everybody yeah, wants to be McAfee, I would assume. Pretty much everybody. Yeah. Like all you need is a laptop and a good microphone and a camera and you can do whatever you want. It's all open to everybody. So to be like, well, you're not anybody unless you do this. Look at what McAfee just did. He didn't do any of that stuff to the point where ESPN needed him. Yeah. Not the other way around. Yeah. So when we start talking about blue bloods, it ties into my com into my thought about What's it freaking matter at this point with the way that college basketball is? NIL opens the door for chicken money to bring John Calipari over, okay? It used to be, hey, I can give you a little money under the table. Hey, I'm on TV all the time. Hey, I can do X, Y, Z. You're going to have to sit. You don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to do that anymore. And you can build it the way you wanted to. And that's what Dan Hurley did. So who would you rather be? Are they a blue blood? Man, if I'm you, kind of like, we don't give a shit. We got six national championships in the last 25 years. We're good. Thanks. Housekeeping. Big thanks to Edovana for sponsoring housekeeping. Uh, they came out to the house last week. I might need them to come to the house this week to do a complete just, just bleach the place as my house is dealing with some stuff. But, but wait, 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 wait. I have, why is this not playing? I had the... Jingle? I had the jingle. Hold on. Oh, I see what's going on. I think on you go here. out with the jingle. You do the ad, then you play right, the jingle. This is all here. Why? Like, play already. If you have mess inside your mansion or trash in your cabana, get it clean, clean with Imobana. Adobe Audition giving me an error. Like, no, sir. I have my audio hardware mapped correctly. Thank you very much. Hit them up online, E-N-O-V-A-N-A dot com. Schedule your one-time cleaning just to give them a shot. Or you can do what I do. They come out every two weeks. They keep the house nice and clean. We appreciate Inovana for sponsoring housekeeping. Um, are we going to auction? Speaking of housekeeping, <laughs> Shady's birthday bash, <laughs> May 3rd, that Friday. Are we auctioning off that cardboard sign? I kept that one. Yes. I saw some of the pictures of the Where's Duke <laughs> making the rounds with I, state fans, which was like, okay. I kept that one. The, okay. the Duke one found a good home. Oh, it did. Okay. It did. Okay, good. It did. Okay. It was a blast, man. Uh, Saturday was fun. Okay. Are we going to auction that thing off, you said? Uh, that'll be part of the raffle. All right. Yes. We got bourbon. We have a Seth Jarvis mixtape, which is very cool. 
And now we have uh, the Where's UNC. Very excited about that. Very excited about that. Breeze through is going to be at the OG Birthday Bash on May 3rd at Shady's. They're going to have the food truck out there. Although I keep saying this, we have to talk to Adam about this. I think he's cool with it and committed to it. We just got to like make sure, make sure. We also have the Gasters this week. That's right. A master's pool that Adam set up for us. I'll set out the link today or okay. we can include it too in the uh, YouTube comments there. Yeah, we can. It's free. You play. We got stuff. Okay. It's a good contest. Yeah, it is master's time. And I'm it is. I know you're hype about this. I'm I'm very and I know Adam is very, very hype about this too. Yes. I'm sure he's got a master's polo for every day of the week <laughs> right now. Did you ever give him the Georgia golf shirt I picked up? I have the Georgia. Oh, golf you still shirt. have it? Yes, it's in. Every time I see him, I'm in the wrong car. So, I see. Yes. I see. I see how it is. We will take care about him. Breezethrough.com. Go check them out. Whitaker and Hammer playing our gasters contest. Yeah, and go. Yes, definitely. I need to participate in that. Uh, Whitaker and Hammer. Check them out. Wh. Lawyer, attorneys, and counselors at law. Um, you had a rental car. No, uh, no traffic violations. Or was it because Jessica was doing the driving? No, I drove. Oh, yeah. Upset. That's the biggest upset of the week. No tickets. Good no for nonsense. You. Good Although for you. I will say a 75 mile per hour speed limit does help on that front. <laughs> Indeed. There yeah. might be one this week as I adjust to life back like, on oh, the 65. Wait a minute. So. Wait a minute. I can't just put pedals in that. <laughs> anyway, if you find yourself in one of those situations, check them out. WH.lawyer. Big thanks to Roback. They have joined our podcast. Check them out. R H O B A C K dot com. Use the promo code OG20 to save 20% off your order. And when Roback reached out to us to work something out with what we're going to be doing on this podcast and having some fun with it, um, I, I'm familiar with Roback because I've seen their Instagram ads and whatnot. And the joggers look good, the shorts look good. But when I looked at the polos, I thought, oh my goodness, it's like Joe Gillio Wonderland here. Yes, and hoodies. Lots of hoodies. So it's more than just golf shirts, I yes. think, is, is the message here. So go check them out, roback.com. Use that promo code OG20 and save yourself some money. And looking forward to uh, uh, our relationship with them. You're going to see a lot of our... You'll see a lot of them with our hockey stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think even during the US Open, I'll get to talk about golf even more. Thanks to our friends at Roback. I better start crash coursing on golf <laughs> since we have to talk about it. Actually, DraftKings might pull me in to golf. But that's they should. That's a different conversation. This week, get yourself a little taste. That's a that's a different conversation. <music> Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, David McKenzie, McKenzie Law. He is our other in-house intellectual property attorney. I'm married to the other one. David, how are you? <laughs> David, can you hear me? I'm well. How are you guys? Uh, I'm just, just making sure I can hear you now. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Just making sure we had the right audio here. All right, so David, I want you to explain like I'm five what we missed last week and all the Final Four hysteria about NC State making it that quietly, it, it just seemed like it was a quiet kind of thing that dropped on my social media feed. Florida State, some of Florida State's claims or motions were dismissed with the ACC. Explain like I'm five what happened last week. Yeah, so last week at the business court in Charlotte, um, the court you know, ruled on Florida State's motion to dismiss. Florida, Florida State brought a challenge to basically the ACC's complaint saying that, one, that the ACC failed to state a claim. The other real key factor that Florida State was asserting was the fact that there was no jurisdiction for the court in Charlotte to proceed, either on subject matter or on per personal jurisdic jurisdiction grounds. The court, you know, there's this pretty good precedent from the North Carolina Supreme Court on that matter. And the business court, Judge Bledsoe in Charlotte, rejected that claim and said under, you know, established precedent involving a case um, with Tro Troy University from Alabama, rejected that case noted that Florida State had deeply engaged, not in governmental activity in North Carolina, but rather in commercial activity in North Carolina to the tunes of millions of dollars. Also, the court went at length up to say that, look, all of this happened in North Carolina. The, the league has been centered here for 71 years. The grant of rights were executed in North Carolina. They were negotiated in North Carolina. And then also critically, I think, to the court's analysis was the fact that Florida State had participated 
in litigation in North Carolina courts against the University of Maryland back in 2013. So it rejected the vast majority of Florida State's claims. Um, it did it did allow one claim, which was kind of a throwaway by the ACC, mm-hmm. which was a breach of fiduciary duty claim. Uh, Essentially, the court said that, you know, a joint venture does not establish a fiduciary duty, one going to or from. And so it did allow Florida State's motion to dismiss on that claim. But on the bulk of the claims, Florida State's solidly in this case. So if I could if I could just kind of boil this down, uh, what the courts in the ACC did with Florida State was the millennial equivalent of going online seeing somebody talk about something and then bring up a receipt, like a screen grab of a previous statement and they go, this you? And that's, is that essentially what they did? They're like, okay, you have all the complaints, but- I think it's a bit more complicated. Yeah, I think it's a bit more complicated than that. Um, You know, the court looked plain and simple. I mean, it is stuck at this stage. It can't really get deeply into the merits of the case. It has to look at what's called the four corners of the complaint. But since they did allege subject matter jurisdiction did not lie in North Carolina, it was allowed to step outside of the complaint and consider some things. And so on that point, the ACC had noted the hundreds, if not thousands of games that Florida State has participated in in North Carolina. But I think the real key factor here is the money it's received by way of its participation in sports in North Carolina. Um, you know, that, that all militated, I think, over and above what I think you've seen out there about case priority. As you know, the ACC filed this case on December 22nd. The next day, Florida State filed this case on December 23rd. And so you had this sort of like who wins based on the first to file rule. I don't think that that played heavily in the court's analysis. It's never a dispositive factor. It's simply a, a factor in the whole consideration. And the key thing that, that drove the court was the same situation in the Troy University case. You set up shop here in North Carolina. Okay. You participated, and more importantly, you made money. So it wasn't exactly like grabbing a screenshot like that. It was more like, like look at the pocketbook. Okay. Hey, including playing in the ACC championship game in Charlotte this past year. Yeah. As well as the ACC championship games in baseball, you know, fencing, rowing. It doesn't matter. You know, they, they've... They've had they've made a lot of money by way of their North Carolina contacts. And so in the case of Troy University, they actually set up an office in Fayetteville to sort of cater to Fort Bragg soldiers down there who may want to get an education at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so it's an analogous situation where you could see where, you know, coming into the state and you're making money like Troy University did and you're coming into state like Florida State did hundreds, if not thousands of times. Um, to play and participate in economic activities such as sports, and then that sticks you in the state. So how does this affect Clemson's legal filings? I think Clemson should pay deep attention. Um, the Clemson, it's interesting, the Clemson case was filed before the ACC's case, but again, case priority is a factor. It's not dispositive. It's not the deciding factor, as we would say. Mm-hmm. I think it all but is all but certain that because of the established ruling, the identical fact patterns, the applicable law, it's all but certain that North Carolina, that Judge Bledsoe is going to retain jurisdiction over that Clemson case and will proceed on that matter. Okay. I had listened to the last time you were on the podcast with, with Jillio. I was on spring break. And I was driving back from Bryson City and I was listening to the podcast and, and Kelly was was listening in and she was kind of nodding along, you know, with a lot of the things that you were talking about with the contracts and, and things like that. But there was one thing that I wanted to kind of poke at, and that is um, a protracted or drawn out legal back and forth between the ACC, Florida State, potentially Clemson, potentially North Carolina, because I know their board of trustees, they're not necessarily happy with the state of things and they're keeping an eye on this. You know, the one thing that I've always come to understand about these matters is, yes, contracts are there. Yes, you know, you can you can point to the business filings and whatnot. But clearly, Florida State doesn't want to be in the ACC anymore. So I've always viewed these legal filings and these legal maneuverings as part of a larger process to negotiate your way out. What is the magic number? to make everybody happy the same way there was a magic number for Maryland to leave. Now, the magic number for this exit is a hell of a lot higher based on what had happened with Maryland, 
but there's always a number. It's the old million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Everybody's got a price. So in your estimation, when you see all this kind of back and forth going, do you see the ACC coming down at all? Or are they so lock solid that they can just keep telling Florida State and potentially Clemson, you guys can do whatever you want, but that's the number and that's what we're sticking with. You know, I don't know what that number is. I think it's probably um, substantial. One of the things that is important to realize is that the grant of rights doesn't have a number in it. It just has a copyright license. It has an intellectual property pledge that goes yeah, it's, on until it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a math problem. Like and we, we've talked to Bubba Cunningham about this in the past where you have X amount of years left. There's a television deal. You punch those numbers in. Here's the number that it would be. And that's what they've been kind of poking around seeing what that number is. And so far, it's guesswork. And if you look at, at Florida State's complaint, it's, it is, in addition to appearing like it was cobbled together from message boards, but it does make a speculative claim that it's around $576 million or something like that. Now, yeah. what they do and what they can't do is amalgamate the value of the media rights, the exit fee, and then some certain broadcasting fees that go along with that. Those are three separate contractual elements. Now, the getting more specifically to that question of what is the value of the grant of rights? Who knows? I mean, it could be much higher than $576 um, million, considering the media landscape. I mean, we're talking about intellectual property rights that are going on for 13 more years mm -hmm. in a context where nobody is, is consuming live TV or the only live TV that people are generally consuming anymore is going to be news and sports. So you got to ask yourself, what are advertisers going to want to pay for? And I can certainly, I can promise you one thing. I don't think that Disney's leadership really cares about the equities in the situation. It cares about the value of what they're going to get out of this deal and be able to then pay towards the shareholders. So, to, and, and there's two points I want to make. I don't think we even know what that number is. The second part is, is it's, it's not like a judge can add that number to a contract. One of the things that appears to be lost on this is that the judge, at least a North Carolina judge, and I would presume that the situation is the same in Florida, just can't undo a contract unless you have a situation of fraud or something that is clearly uh, goes against public policy, like, you know, a contract for a criminal act, for example, is clearly against public policy. So what a court is then forced to do is try to look at the contract in order to effectuate the intent of the parties at the time of signing the contract. I think that there's a lot of evidence out there that the intent of the parties back in 2013 and again in 2016 was to bind everybody together in a long term agreement. Yeah. So a North Carolina court in particular would be stuck with what's called the blue line rule in trying to effectuate the the actual intent of the parties. And blue line basically is that they can strike through some terms, but they can't add to the contract terms. And they can't undo it outside of a showing of fraud or public policy or duress or something like that. They can't undo the contract um, completely as if, the, you know, to, to restart the, the whole the parties from the very beginning. That just doesn't happen. And I don't see I, I do not see any credible claim by Florida State that there has been any fraudulent conduct on any ACC actor. Again, looking at its complaint, its second complaint, which appears to have been at least in part filed to more or less support the first complaint. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be measured in my language here. I realize that a lot of people have their emotions involved and they think that this is an athletic contest. It's it's sports. Uh, I think it's emotions sports. are run hot, clearly. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and I understand all that. But their first complaint was bad. Their second complaint is arguably worse with the Swafford Raycom allegations and everything else. And if, oh, you know, yeah, as I've written one. elsewhere, Tiered licensing yeah. is completely standard. And, and th then the Swafford Raycom allegations are truly cobbled together from a variety of internet sources. Not a single allegation comes from Florida State itself. Yeah. Not a single email comes from Tallahassee, nothing. So yeah, that, that was, that's just red meat for the Board of, board of Trustees. That's red meat well, for the And that's fine. And I understand that. that I think that's fine, but court, courthouses are serious places, guys. I mean, listen, this is a courthouses are places where you know child custody decisions are rendered, where people lose their liberty, where um, where money is is forked over in droves. Mm -hmm. you now, if you're going to go to a courthouse where there's mostly sad things going on and it's serious business, you better come with an actual legal claim. And I'm sorry, a change in market conditions, which is the essential claim that Florida State is bringing, is not a valid legal claim. 
This all sounds like one loss for Florida State. I think it's destined for failure uh, for and, and for Clemson too. And it's not because I'm pro ACC or anything like that. This is just the law. Um, this isn't this isn't a basketball court. This isn't a football field. And there are a number of problems that Florida State and Clemson have, beginning with the fact that they three separate presidents, Clemson's Jane Barker and then Eric Barron and John Thrasher on behalf of Florida State, signed this agreement. And then not only did they sign the agreement, not once, but twice, they took hundreds of millions of dollars under the agreement. When you do that, there are equitable principles to stop to stop you from com- complaining years later. And that's what we have here. David McKenzie, we appreciate the insight uh, at a level that, you know, my caveman lawyer uh, does not understand at times, but we appreciate your insight on that. McKenzieLaw.net is the website. Hopefully we can talk to you again when we get some more information on this. I do think it's interesting. I'm going to editorialize here. I do think it's interesting that when Florida State actually lost something, kind of crickets. You know, when, when the filing happened, it created a bunch of content, a lot of conversation. It's the demise of the ACC. What happens next? I, I look at it on YouTube. The algorithm is feeding me all these things about the ACC is going to die tomorrow. Florida State has a bad day in court. I didn't really see much of anything. I, I really didn't. And I think that speaks to a larger issue of what's going on in college athletics. But we appreciate the time. Absolutely. Anytime, guys. Thank you very much. It's interesting. You, if you watch on YouTube, you see Joe apply something to his neck. Well, one thing that we're going to be doing here soon is taking you to Nature's Relief, hempstore.com. That's relief, L E A F. See what they did there? Leaf, like on smart. a tree. Very, very smart. Nature's Relief, hempstore.com. They got locations across the triangle, two in Raleigh. And they're in the G, man. They're in the G, and they got a new location. They just opened up on Western Boulevard. They've got a big grand opening event. That'll be taking place on 420. Very, very clever. But you went to the you went to the Garner store. You went in with like zero knowledge of what it's all about, but that's the key. Right. It's about the education. No. And and you ask questions and there's different gummies, there's different drinks. Mm-hmm. There's the, I mean, they got they got a lot of different selection in there. And I get it. Uh, the, our audience is a little bit younger. Yeah. They're less intimidated by those kind of things. But when you go in there and you ask a question, hey, I would like I would like help sleeping. That was my answer. That was my question. <laughs> like you're sitting here, like, and they go, do you want a psychoactive development to it? And you go, no, I just I just, I just want sleep. CBD. I just want, I want deep I want sleep. something that's going to help me sleep. Yep. Okay, boom. Yeah, and, and I feel, I, I, you know, to editorialize here for a second, I feel better about that than taking a a different kind of you know yes m- prescription medication. Like you know, I, I don't. I think this is a this is a smart way to do it and, and go in ask questions and they're going to help you and yeah you're that's, the get relief. that's that's the key Good everything word, every, everything the other is, relief everything is everything is natural right down to some of their gummies i've had some of their delta nine and there's no color there's a little flavor to it and whatnot but there's no like additives weird you know xyz it's, it's all natural uh the information is readily available to you so you know what's in these gummies mm-hmm. what's in the powders the tinctures what's in the drinks etc that's key Absolutely key. And you can check them out. Nature's Relief, hempstore.com. Grand opening event, 420 on Western Boulevard. Go check that out. Big thanks to Hometown Realty for sponsoring Ovias and Julio. Uh, I'm in that hockey, uh, I'm in that hockey clinic mode right now. So I see the big HTR sign on my way to the Garner, Garner okay. Iceplex. And they got they got, got Garner covered. No, we do have Garner covered, but Good. Hometown Realty has all they have six locations from here to the coast. All not this just covered. G. Go to myhtr.com, buy, sell, calculate. Yeah, please don't do, don't sell yourself short when you're selling your house. Use the experts. Go to myhtr.com. Yeah, speaking of having things covered, Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority can have your house covered and get you free of those pests. So go to bugsbite.com and bundle save. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to sell anybody out at a certain university, but, but let's just say Hayes had, had a time uh, as, as did a lot of people. Uh, that are NC State fans getting to Phoenix. I there, see. There were some issues. I see. Uh, with a certain package that was sold through the oh, school. Oh, I saw some online uh, about that. So when I so I was able to be out there, yeah. and I'm getting a text from Hayes. He's like, I, I'm just going to go to Cleveland, going to go watch the women's game tonight, yeah. and then tomorrow I'll fly into Phoenix. So 
I know he was happy to see both, both games. That was not his plan. Uh, but I will say this. Hayes doesn't believe in contracts, but he does believe in saving you money. So check him out. Bugsbite.com. There's all kinds of different ways to bundle and save and protect your number one investment, mm-hmm. which is your home. funny you told me to live on the live line I, I, uh, on, on draft i games. told you to be very careful no, no, no. Li- li- uh, that's what i told you yeah. i told you there's a potential edge on the live line in being able to watch the game and see how it's going or and go or, from there or know how teams go about things like sure. for instance i talked about this yesterday when Iowa was up on South Carolina early because Caitlin Clark was doing her thing, yeah. I think she had what 18 points in the first quarter or whatever it was. Um, I was like, nah, Don Staley, this group, that ain't gonna last. They're coming home. They're coming home. So I looked at the live line, and sure enough, South Carolina was in a rare plus situation on the money line. I went, gimme. <laughs> and then same thing with last night. The lines got a little wonky live because mm-hmm. hey. You know, look, produce good, man. They got Zach Eadie. Yeah, they, they really are. They got they got one of the all-timers in college basketball playing for you, man. It's t- it's tough to stop Zach Eadie. So things started to shift a little bit. I went, no, 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 no. I've seen this before. So I did a quick parlay because you can even set up uh, quick in-game parlays. I was like, UConn will absolutely be in the lead by halftime, and they'll win by a greater margin when it's all said and done. I think it was like minus four at the half and minus seven to end the game. I'm like, yes and yes. Hit them both. I hit them both. So, you know, thanks for the advice, Joe. Okay. I've been, I've been on that live line, man. Now, I did have a little bit of fun. I had like a six-pick parlay <laughs> that they put together that had like Tristan Newton over 15 and a half points, which happened. Uh, Klingman over 13 and a half, which, he didn't, which didn't happen. Uh, Caravan I, over 12 and a half. all those overs, sir? I know, I know. I, I, went, I went over <laughs> heavy. Okay. Because I thought UConn was going to absolutely dominate. They did, but just not in that way. And I also took advantage of the no sweat bet. Okay. So once you sign up, if you've used the promo code OG24, you will get some other cool features on DraftKings, including things like a no sweat bet, uh, which I ended up winning. because I was the one that I took where it was minus four at the half and minus seven to win the game. I put 20 bucks down for that one. If it didn't hit, no big deal. I, I would get up to $25 in bonus bets back if it didn't happen. And those are the cool things that you can do at DraftKings when you use that promo code OG24. But it's Masters Week, Joe. And, and do you want me to disappoint you with my my choice today? Or do you want me to... Because no, I'm going to do a gambling podcast with Bennett and Josh tomorrow. Okay. That we'll do all Masters stuff. That's fine. So today, I'm going to give you a soccer bet. All right. All right. We have the Champions League. We have Arsenal against Bayern Munich. Yeah. Okay. Uh, both teams to score is minus 130. Mm-hmm. This game is is at Arsenal. I would normally I could I could see the tie here, but I'm going to go for both teams to score minus 130 that means bet $130 win 100. Mm-hmm. Uh I shouts to everyone during the previous week when I was still back in Raleigh who were very excited about my NIT wins <laughs> and also I can't decide whether you're going to thank me or hate me for the nerfy life. But for everyone who's been on the nerfy bandwagon now, no runs, first inning bets. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I have seen some. I have seen some people responding to the <laughs> nerfy. I did like a ridiculous seven game. You can't nerfy seven nerfy. Dude, nerfy. I got six out of the seven. <laughs> exactly. I got six. I'm like, I'm so close. <laughs> yeah, put five bucks down, man. It was whatever. Okay. So, so yes, yeah. I'm gonna go both teams to score. <laughs> Arsenal, Bayern today. All right. All right. So as you can tell, DraftKings is here in North Carolina. We've been having a lot of fun with it. It's the official sports betting partner of NASCAR. It is live. And when you bet $5 with using that promo code OG24, you'll get $200 instantly in bonus bets. So download that DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use that promo code OG24. Bet $5. You get $200 instantly in bonus bets only on the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code OG24. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-185543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and used under license. (laughs) 
back to back to John Calipari because there's a couple loose threads on John Calipari leaving Kentucky for Arkansas that actually ties into okay. our blue blood conversation and everything else. Before you do that, since I'm a little bit out of practice, yeah, can you just say my favorite words for me, please? What you were right, Julio, about what? It's always about your next contract, man. It's always about your next contract with so, these guys. So where's Kevin Keats going? Well, he just got two more years. Oh, he now go, he's through 30. Oh, think of the Kentucky money <laughs> if they had won. No, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. I'm kidding, of course. No, actually, it's interesting. It's about your next contract. D- D- Dan Hurley's going to get a call from Kentucky. Like yeah. I saw Matt Jones from Kentucky Sports Radio. He's like, look. As they should. Kentucky's going to make <laughs> these three guys say no. Yeah. Dan Hurley's one of them. They, they, want, Billy, they, they want Billy Donovan to tell him no for the third time. <sighs> I don't think Billy's taking that job. For the third time. Yeah. And then, yeah, NATO, it's already said, yeah, no, nah, I'm not doing this. Nato said it. that early. He said Sir, it real I told early. You. <laughs> really <laughs> early. <laughs> and Dan and Dan Hurley last night when he was asked about it was just kind of laughed it off. Like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere, guys. Like, come on now. We're not now really you doing you this. could say that. As I was on this yeah. podcast one time talking yeah. about Mike Elko. Yeah. By the way, shouts to Duke. Keeping Carol Lawson. Yeah. I did not think that was going to happen. So good for them. Yeah. So he's off to, but I guess it, it kind of ties into. I thought, so to go back, since we haven't talked. Yeah. I thought Kentucky should have told Cal, love you, mean it, but we got to move in a direct, different direction. But they had to buy him out and they weren't going to pay that money. And I suspect that conversation happened even earlier, hence the Nate Oates. Because remember on the timeline, mm-hmm. Nate Oates got his extension at the end of the regular season. Yes. Why was that, Joe? I don't, mm. Mm, that's so weird. So weird. And then Kentucky loses in the first round again under John Calipari. Cal's 65 years old, yeah. right? It, the, it, and you could sit here and go, they, he won a national championship there. That was thir- That was 14 years ago now. That's a lifetime at Kentucky. And yes, he had tremendous success there. And yes, if you look at the all NBA teams, those are all of the ones that went to college were f- through him. Mm-hmm. So you, it's hard to dispute what he's done there, except for the fact that his teams were starting to fail, not only to get to the final four, but just in the tournament in general. Yeah. Like, their lack of success in the tournament was kind of galling, giving all of the talent that they've had. Now, this is something that in reading Matt Jones, kind of watching all these things kind of play out, listening to Ion College Basketball when the decision was made for everybody to just work through it. Um, and I think the way that Matt Norlander had put it was, look, these two entities are stuck with each other. Like John Calipari yeah. is finally dealing with the fact that he cut out the administration for the longest time because he thought he was bigger than everything else. And then now he has to go to Mitch Barnhart, who, by the way, you know what I, you know what I knew things were done, you know what I knew that essentially Kentucky fans were over John Calipari. When Mark Stoops said it was a football school, and like, it, and, and people were not exactly like shushing him and telling him, and, and, okay, just simmer down. And Calipari lost his shit, and it got to the point where Mitch Barnhart essentially was taking the side of Stoops. And had to have a conversation with Calipari, and Calipari came back like, "Well, you know, this is what I was, oh, you know, whatever, whatever." In, in, a, in a weird sort of way, it was the inverse of you know the Dave Doran. You know, you go tell Steve Smith we're not a basketball school. Of course, you see how they get around and get behind you when you get to the three, final four. Three months later. <laughs> <laughs> now, to Dave Doran's credit, man, he's been up there. He's been he's been front and center. He's been having a good time, but. It got to a point where they were just simply over John Calipari. It happens that way. Yeah. And, and that's what ties it back to the Blue Blood conversation. Cal- Kentucky's trying to do both. They are they have the talent. They have access to the best players. They're putting guys to the NBA. When Kelly was in Nashville for Jacob's last uh, hockey tournament for the Junior Canes, it happened to coincide with the SEC tournament. And she was like, Kentucky fans are everywhere. I go, Right. It's kind of like Carolina fans. They show out. So Kentucky's in that boat. But you got to win. He wasn't winning. And he just refused to accept that the way he was doing things wasn't working. So the question is, is he going to be able to do that at Arkansas? I'll say this. The the Shwebe teams were older. I mean, he went through a phase where he was getting older players. He did. So I I don't see Calipari the same way as, as some other people do in terms of, oh, he was only using one and done players. Like, I, I don't follow that. Like the Shwebe teams, he had two of them. They were he was the best player. He was a fifth, fourth, and fifth year player. Yeah, on the team. I mean, so and they also had transfers that they were bringing in, trying to hit on on transfer shooters. Mm-hmm. That's what they were trying to do. This year was the one where they went back and got a bunch of 
five star guys. Uh, Kentucky paid more for Rob Dillingham than it basically was the what they paid for Rob Dillingham was the equivalent of NC State's on AL roster, entire roster. Right. You know, like Kentucky and Duke are in the four million dollar range mm-hmm. in their roster. Like there aren't many teams. Speaking of blue bloods, there's not many teams up there in that rarefied air. Not even Carolina, sir. UConn, not, not even Carolina. That. They got a right? different way, and it's working for so, them. So uh, I look at this and. and Sometimes the message stagnates too. Mm-hmm. The personality stagnates. Sometimes it happens and it, you need, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now yeah. whose name I haven't heard. Don't make me run to the end of this hallway and take the picture. Lavelle Moten. I can tell Lavelle you. Moten would take every name, dominate. He would be unbelievable at luck, Kentucky. Look. John Wall would be on the bench with him. Yeah. He would be absolute. He would smash there. Smash. That's a that's a layered conversation. Sure. Like that's a layered Who conversation. Who knows everybody? Who's also a really good game coach? Yeah, I get all that. You know stuff. who's not? Yeah, I, yeah. Well, John Calipari. <laughs> the guy who's like, here, let's just, Stucky, who's an action network gambler yeah. guy, was like. Here's John Calipari at Arkansas with all his NIL money. Here comes the mid major that they'll play in the first round. Yeah, playing a junk zone, and Calipari's mm-hmm. like, I don't know, what I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, how do I handle that's, this? That's another example of what Dan Hurley's able to do at UConn. I mean, they're running sets. They are running oh. things. They are coaching the hell you, out of that. If you're unfamiliar with the state of New Jersey and and, and Bob Hurley Senior, yeah, you're talking guys. <laughs> We're talking which again, one of the all timers. Talent's here. not enough. And he's gonna go out lame at Arkansas too, just like he went out lame at Kentucky. And I get that it's stagnant. It's kinda you know what it reminded me of? It reminds me of so many levels of the stagnant message and how you're over me and I'm over you. It was like Jimbo Fisher at Florida State. Sure. And right down to the weirdness of the exit. Remember, Jimbo Fisher had the Christmas tree. Right. The the tossed Christmas tree early. Early. Okay. <laughs> And John Calipari, it was like, it was like Thanksgiving. We threw yeah, the- <laughs> you know, and John Calipari is apparently out walking his dog, or is he actually? When I say walking his dog, he has a dog in a carriage. So this was footage from Lee Howard in uh, Lexington. John Calipari walking his dog along Richmond Road this afternoon declines to give a comment to Kentucky fans. No, I don't. I'm walking my dog right now. Hey, Coach, you got anything no, you want to say to your fans? I'm right now. Right now? You want to say anything yeah, to your no, fans right good. now? I'm good. I'm good. Come on, Paul. It's talking to the dog or another person. Come on. I don't know. My dog, my dog is walking me. Come on. Okay. So I have questions. <laughs> What's with the stroller? Does he put the dog in the stroller? Like, little dogs can't. Always cover enough ground. How big of a yard do you think John Calipari has? Uh, gigantic. You don't think you can get let that little dog in your backyard to go to the bathroom and you know move its legs? Did you need to be on Richmond? Did you need to be on the main drag when you are the guy who's everybody's speculating about? He wanted to be seen. He wanted to be seen. He's like, I know what I'll do. I'm going to quote unquote walk the dog. If the dog needed to go to the bathroom and you live on the estate that you live on, Open up the back door and let the dog do its business. You don't need to walk the dog. And are you really walking the dog when you put it in a stroller? No. That's bullshit. <laughs> and that's exactly why Kentucky fans should feel the way they feel about John Calipari. When you see that, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Everything about Kentucky fans, like, oh, they they expect too much. They're spoiled. They're this or that. Like, no, it has nothing to do with that. We're just over this dude. And he's given us every reason to be over him to the point where the block is literally hot. Joe, the block is hot. And what am I going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, quote, unquote, walk my dog in the stroller. Man of the people. (laughs) Every day. (laughs) I want to be seen. I want the attention on me. (laughs) I forgot who it was who covers the, who's the guy who covers Kentucky for, um, uh, for the athletic. Um, oh, Kyle Tucker. Kyle Tucker, thank you. I, for some reason, I couldn't remember Kyle Tucker's name. Kyle Tucker's tweet actually nailed it. Ah, yes, for the eighth Final Four in a row, John Calipari is taking attention away for not being in the Final Four. So they're over his shit, man. And that's just the example, the latest example. So I, I, you're not... Uh, now, Lavelle is a, uh, a, a 
super scratch off there. Yeah, no, the, my, the thing my, about, real quick about Lavelle Moton, and I think people understand that Lavelle Moton's a real one. Like Lavelle's been nothing but awesome with us. He means a lot to Riley, who's he does a lot of incredible things. But you can't sit here and tell me that Kentucky is going to give him a legitimate look when there are schools around here that had every reason to give him a chance. Scoff at the idea. It's different. It's different era, man. You want to get the best players. You want to coach them up. That's the guy. Okay. Uh, do you know who I would love to bet on for this? Rick Pitino. Yeah, he's coming home. You talk about the cork board. Dude, you talk about the cork board. He's going to bring his kid with him. Do you talk about the cork board? He says, he said, his biggest regret was leaving Kentucky. Sir. He has a chance, Joe. Do you remember all of the 2016 investigations? Yeah. And my theory that it was really all about a Kentucky fan working at the FBI who just wanted to get Rick Pitino out of Louisville. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the 4D chess? If Rick Pitino ends up being Kentucky's next basketball coach, that would be funny. You want to talk about playing the long game? Yeah, that would be funny. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm kind of actually here for that. Big thanks to the Butchers Markets for sponsoring Ovis and Julio. Check them out online, thebutchersmarkets.com. What are you laughing at? I, I got to tell you this story. Okay. First of all, Butchers Markets, Lake Boone, yeah, OG Epicenter. Yeah. You, the number of people that I saw in at the Final Four, state fans, n- number one thing, love the show. Number two thing, you're not lying about the steak and cheese. Yeah. Like, oh, that was the other one. I'm so I'm I'm putting the sign together. Mm-hmm. And it, this was uh this was Friday at the practice. No lie. Okay. I'm putting the sign together. Drawing it up. Somebody stops me. Love the show. Hey, he goes, you got to stop underselling something from the butcher's market. I go, what? What's that? He goes, you guys are sleeping on the French dip. Oh, I haven't, had, I the fr- like, I haven't had the French I dip. Like, I go, but you know, I get, yeah, caught, you get caught up where I, I just want to order. Yeah. So like for the women. Yeah. It's funny. You get caught up on stuff. Not to shout out to Longleaf. You know, I did not get the chicken pot pie. Still not. Still haven't done that yet. Which your I know. Well, they had the Ribbler on the menu. Oh no, I've had, I had the Ribbler. I hadn't it's had so the, good. I hadn't had the Ribbler yet. The so bun had, is the key. Yeah, the bun is, bun is money. Kelly finally had the Frito pie. She's like, "Why have I been sleeping on the Frito pie?" So now you. All right, you know what? I'm gonna have to go get the French dip. I'm gonna do that this week. Make sure that happens. Check them out the butchersmarkets.com locations across the triangle. Um, lots of Tuffy tracks were consumed. What was the final number that I saw from Jared that he had texted me that he had texted you? Yeah. Was it 798 gallons of Tuffy tracks? I know. He he texted me and, and obviously I was in a different time zone and all these things. Yeah. He was like, I'm not texting Ovius because I want you to do the over under again. Ah, <laughs> and I, see. I was like, I see. he keeps spoiling it by just going over. Like I can't yeah. come up with a, a number high enough for him. That's funny. That but is he funny. gave me the context though, because you know, sometimes context is important. You it ready? Is. Yeah. All right. So they did fun fact 700. I love the number here 798 gallons oh, okay. of Tuffy tracks sold during this run. For perspective, the top selling monthly guest flavor gets around 500 to 525 gallons for a whole month. So the Tuffy Tracks dominated that number in only that. two weeks. Amazing. And as you already know, the ice cream at Two Roosters is amazing. It is. And you you, you mentioned the guest flavors. They got a cool thing going on right now with local elementary school kids. Okay. They picked six of the best kid creations. Kid Chef. And they've got it at their various locations. Of course, you know those kids are like rock stars when they go back to school and be like, have you tried my flavor? My flavor. Um, I will say, and Jared did text me. He was very proud of me. I went for the strawberry honey oh, the last time I was there. It up. Instead of just the bourbon coffee, you cannot go wrong with the bourbon coffee, though. Big thanks to Matt Davis, insuregarner.com, the OG insurance.com, or call Matt Davis directly, 919-779-8277 with State Farm. You can save money on home and auto. We'll get an email every so often about bundling and saving and uh, how much money they're saving per month, which you can put towards ice cream, French dips. All the good things. All the good things. That's all the good things on Garner. Nature's relief. <laughs> <and done. laughs> all the Hit things. them all up. 
<laughs> no, Matt. Matt's great for a conversation because you don't know what you don't know. So right. call 919-779-8277. Figure out the best way to save money on you, all your insurance needs. All right, let's get out of here on some Hey Joe. Qu Actually, I have a Hey Joe question. Yeah. You surprised at Joel Justice? Are oh, laying this into no, he, an associate head coach gig with uh, Ohio State? No, I saw some people had texted me because I was in transit yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, no, you got to let Joel eat, man. I mean, he's hey, man, he's he's, kinda, a, he's a big but moving up. But Joel is part of oh. the, the process with yeah. NC State's turnaround and getting the right players and you know, the the fabric of this team. A lot of it had to do with Joel Justice. A lot of it had to do with Levi Watkins. So good for Joel for parlaying this into the, another These are gig. good problems to have yes. for NC State. Speaking of rosters for NC State, uh, from NC State Wolf Wolf, <laughs> good chance Kentucky's Rob Dillingham replaces DJ Horn at NC State. Watch Kentucky Portal bound players. That's a lot of money for Rob Dillingham, Joe. Uh, no, he's going pro. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But I think NC State fans can dream, right? The one who uh, got away. You, listen, you, you, Joel was a key in getting DJ Horn. Levi Watkins was key the year before getting mm -hmm. Jarkel Joyner. Can mm -hmm. we now, while we're going back and relitigating re things, please, can we now go back and realize NC State was good last year? Did people say they weren't? Yeah, because it, it, you never won an NCAA oh, tournament game, this and uh, that. And it's like, no, no, they had a good team. They had a good team last year. They lost to a better team in Creighton. Yeah. At altitude where DJ Burns was in foul trouble. <laughs> like, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> okay, he was terrible for all seven years. Uh, no. From a mitt. Uh, crazy how two years ago, UNC was on the bubble and went into Cameron Indoor, one case last home game, and then got to the tourney and the Final Four victory over Duke. This year, Duke could have knocked State out from the NCAAs in the ACC tournament, then lost them in the Elite Eight, forever egg on the face. That, that's part of the fabric. That's part yeah, of the three-legged stool, as but it's, Luke Dukat called it. It's not forever, though. No, it's not. Here comes Cooper Flag and, and Hope Springs Eternal. Let's go to the YouTube comment section. Uh, th there has been a little bit of the okay. Now that this is over, can I be a hater? Th th some oh, of the, sure. some of the hater stuff has come out. Sure, you know, yesterday's podcast was based on well, what's next for NC State after this Final Four run? Uh, from Epi Funny, what's next? Same old, same old. One hot streak against a less against less than ACC competition does not a dynasty make or start. I don't think anybody was talking about a dynasty, but okay. Uh, Kevin Keats is what he is. All of Gilio's rantings aside, <laughs> but don't worry, State fans, you'll always have Clemson and Brad Brownell to keep you company in mediocresville. Okay, then. Brad Brownell just went to the Elite Eight. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. From Smartphone <laughs> Genius, I had no illusions about stopping eating. State uh, has no one that can match up with him one-on-one. -on -one. I was hoping they could at least run Purdue off the three-point line, but they gave up 40% from three. Again, that was a late situation. The first half, NC State's yeah. defense was excellent and did run them off the three-point line. I thought they did a good job with that. Never forget never forget the players of 2024, Wolfpack Legends. Personally, I don't think we'll see another run like this until the next coach. So there you go. Uh, this is from William. Hopefully somebody takes him off our hands. Keats is what he is. Record says he is a glorified AAU D2 coach oh, who got go. lucky for three weeks in March. <laughs> Next year, we're back to ninth in the conference, losing the first ACC tournament game. We're stuck with this for years because of that dumbass contract Debbie Yao gave him. This is a flash in the in the plan. In the pan, I say what he's saying there. Uh, we are still in the wilderness. Like I said, all it all it took, final four, warm and fuzzies aside, just wait until they lose. The haters were going to come out. We saw this a lot with Hubert Davis last year too, remember? Got to the final four. They were hot. They didn't have a great year the following year. Obviously, they didn't make yeah. the NCAA tournament and it was a she! Just tell me you don't watch basketball. That's I know. All. I know. A lot of folks actually do not watch basketball. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's funny. I was on threads. I'm trying to spend some more time on threads. Okay. And I had seen this. Uh, I, I, and I, I pointed this out that I am guilty of training the threads algorithmic feed to send me cringy <laughs> cyber truck content. And because I cannot stop scrolling when I come across gems like this. And it was some dude who tweeted out thankful for, for having a cyber truck to help me with the real work and the big loads. Uh, I count eight bags <laughs> of mulch. soil. It's eight bags of topsoil, Joe. What's a wait? What's a cyber truck? It's the Tesla. It's it's like it looks like it looks like a PlayStation One truck, like graphics polygons. Oh, okay. Have you not seen this? Well, here's no. the thing. 
I have not seen a cyber truck yet. But I had pointed out when I saw these eight bags of dirt, I'm like, man, my old Honda Fit, and I know you could do this too because you had you had a Honda Fit. I put like 20 bags of mulch in that yeah. bad boy with the magic seats. So it's funny to me to see these guys with a cyber truck. I have yet to see a cyber truck in town. Do you know what they had in Phoenix, downtown Phoenix? What's that? The driverless cars. Oh, they did. Wild. Welcome to Johnny. Wild. Cat. The three. So we parked for the fan fest at the convention center yeah. near, or in downtown. It was the only time we went downtown. And there was two or three of them that we saw. And we saw a group get out. And they were a little bit they're in my in my age range. Mm -hmm. And and I looked at them, I go, How did how did it go? And they were like, they're like, not gonna lie to you, man. It was fucking wild. <laughs> like interesting. Cause I'm like, how do you let go? Like, you know me. I, I, I like, how do you let go? I couldn't do it. And they were just like, it was cool. It was okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So you're wait, this is this is funny. You don't know what a cyber truck is? Mm -mm. Dude, if you this is again a why the internet is a weird place. Yeah. Because in my little online circles and what the algorithm feeds me is that I get nonstop cyber truck footage. People showing you a cyber truck doing something stupid. People dunking on cyber truck owners who had it delivered and the stainless steel is already screwed. You know, like it's discolored. The panel gaps are terrible. Like the, 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 the wire driving um, assembly like fails on them. It's all sorts of crazy stuff, right? So I get cyber truck stuff all the time. All the time. Interesting. Interesting. Never heard of it. All right. That's funny. That's also the tech uh, the tech podcast I listen to. Obsessed. Obsessed with the Cybertruck. It looks ridiculous. Apparently, there's a couple in town. Because I haven't seen one. Somebody had actually posted a photo for me from Briar Creek. In, in front of the Briar Creek. Um, so, it's garden. Tesla's truck. It's Tesla's truck. Okay. Yeah. Not like a Rivian, not like a Ford F-150 Lightning or any of that stuff. I've seen some electric vehicles around here. Like I've seen a Lucid. I've seen a Fiskars. I've seen the VinFast, which is like locally made. They've got one up at North Hills for people to check out. But I'm not quite there yet in electric, man. I will say after renting a newer car, yeah. I'm ready to go to Bennett <laughs> Johnson at the Heaster <laughs> Automotive Group and be like, hey... So, so what do you got? <laughs> my technology from 2009. I, I've now been spoiled for a week. <laughs> so it's funny. I actually want to go in the opposite direction because Caleb just turned 16, but he wasn't, he got his learner's permit later because sure. there was such a COVID backlog yes. of and take your time. Ed. Don't be in a hurry. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah. So I ended up having to get private instruction for a week. Um, uh, somebody called Fuller Driving School. They did a good job. They they got him prepped and all that stuff, and he passed his learner's permit. But I'm kind of dealing with the usual stuff where, you know, the kids today just aren't necessarily motivated to drive. Right. Even though I've explained to them, the sooner you get to a driver's license, the sooner you get to us looking at getting you a car, and the sooner it, it means that you can go like see your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. maybe i don't know i don't know about you joe that feels like an ad for the heister automotive group the sooner you get your license the sooner you can go see your get off your other. keister get, get off, off your keister, keister. Um, <laughs> i don't know mm. i'm wondering and you can see your significant other. i'm wondering if i'm wondering if they would be okay keister with keisterauto.com <laughs> get some keister you could sell your car there too. You can't. <laughs> Things I didn't know. You can't do that. You can't do that. Now I'm sitting here workshopping. I'm like, would they be okay with us doing an ad for them for Heaster Automotive Group? I'm like, get off, like, get off your keister to get a license so you can go get some keister. Because again, wasn't that the, wasn't that not the motivation when you and I turned 16? Yeah, we different in New Jersey because oh, you right. can't drive until you're 17. That's but. right. And you also can't pump your gas, too, which is another weird <laughs> Still thing can't too. do that. No. Well, growing up in Boca Raton, it was funny because the snowbirds would come down and I could tell who was from New Jersey because I'd be pumping like, gas. Around, like, oh, yeah. Just... Actually, I would have lovely older women come, excuse me. Um, can you help? Me? Son, can you can you help me? I'm like, yeah, it's no, no big deal. It's it's okay. But yeah, man. It's like, I'm just trying to motivate them. Did you get a new craft beer shirt while I was going? Yeah, I went to, this is from Bryson City from the from spring break, Bryson uh, City Outdoors. You're the, you're the only one. What? Go on spring break and you get a. I get another craft shirt, shirt from a brewery. Yes, yes. No, but to close the loop on on the car thing, you want newer technology. Like part of me mm -hmm. wants to give Caleb the newer car with all the safety features. Yeah. You know, all the yeah, sensing yeah. and all that stuff, right? With the Civic, and I kind of want an old car with a tape deck in it. You do. I do. 
Yeah. I want I want a car with a tape deck in it. I, I don't was, know. I was going to say I just sold the mini. No, the minivan didn't have a didn't tape have deck. a tape deck. No, the Fit had a CD player. Yes, I would have taken that Fit. Well, um, probably would have been, been for another day. But now, what I'm looking for ideally is a Honda Element. Oh, okay. I want a Honda Element so badly. They don't make they them don't anymore, make them right? anymore. I think they stopped making them in 2011. Okay, but they've kind of they've they've developed like a cult following. And they look ridiculous. They're these little boxes. Right. But I love them. I think they're cool. They look very functional. If I can find one, I don't even know if they make them with a tape deck, but if they did, <laughs> just get an eight track. You'll be fine. My dad's car, my dad's Nova had an eight track back in the day. Nova. Yeah, man. As, you, as, you, was... as your people know, what does it mean? <laughs> That's why I was tar- tough sell. No go. Gringos try to sell us a car that says no go. Nova? 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 What? Why am I buying this? <laughs> I can buy this. Great moments in marketing history. Oh, yeah. My dad had a champagne colored Nova. <laughs> a pink. <laughs> champagne Nova, man. I think it was. Hey, he was him and the Gallagher brothers. Hey, man. That was the move. So, yeah. I, know, I got We got to talk to Bennett. We got marketing slogans. I'm in the market for a Honda Element. Let's go. All right. Let's get to wrap it up for today's edition. Uh, we will see you on Wednesday.